Hey Space Travelers! Are you ready to go on discovery with me and learn about potential jobs in space? Or are you afraid to discover the whole truth? If we survive before the end of this century without getting extinct, the next century will be full of space colonization. But before we get to a point where significant colonies start popping up on Mars, Venus, Titan and other celestial bodies, in this century we have a lot of things to do. First, we have to inspire people. Because if in the next 20 years we don't have at least 20 to 30 Elon Musk type individuals who are fueling innovation and inspiring children, we won't be able to colonize anything at all. But that's just a first step. Next, we need to start new age of expansion. Any type of expansion was always based on one major principle – monetary gain. So to stay it bluntly, if people exploring space can profit of it, there will be only government agency exploring space. And we know how that turns out most of the time. In this video, we're going to think through what this new age of expansion brings to the job market. Yeah. Robots may replace the factory workers, but unless we build a super smart computer able to build robots by itself, somebody has to build those robots. So assuming that there is no major geopolitical shift in the next 50 years or so, which is highly unlikely, and assuming that whatever we have already planned can be done within the reasonable time frame, let's ask the question. What can I do to be part of the space colonization? Think, Mark. Think. Oh, it's no surprise to anybody that scientists will be one of the most important professions for anybody wanting to help humanity colonize space. Whether privately or publicly funded, an army or two made of scientists will always be needed. Natural scientists already are very interesting. But those mathematicians, physicists, botanics, chemists and most importantly the programmers will be at the front end of space exploration. Each one of these fields will be extremely useful for space exploration and as a result will be a very lucrative. But this is just scratching the surface. For the most part, these guys are theoretical, experimental types. They can theorize and test and eventually make it possible for incredible things to happen. But we will also need those who will build the stuff. Of course, I'm talking about engineers and general tech guys. An idea that can be brought to life is useless. So engineers will probably be the most important aspect of space exploration. Do you want a new rocket? You are going to need an engineer. Do you want to build a space casino? You are going to need an engineer for that. Do you want to build the first colony on the moon? Guess what? You will still need engineers for that. You will technically need a type of scientists when it comes to making anything work in space. But if you want to be a big part of the new age, engineering of any kind will come in handy. Most new jobs that will be created during colonization of space will be here on Earth. You don't need to go to the moon and start building some crazy machine there. No, you will work on Earth and help astronauts do their job. And yeah, that kind of sucks. When you are the most important aspect of the job, but all the fame goes to the guy you don't like. Well, if you want to be one who gets the fame, you should aspire to be an astronaut. And not just any astronaut, you have to be an astronaut that does at least one first. Twelve people have landed on the moon so far. Twelve is not a big number. But I bet you can only name two of them. Neil Armstrong, the first guy that stepped on the moon, and Buzz Aldrin, because he was also there when Neil stepped on the moon. So, you have to be exceptional and also have some luck to be the part of the first mission on Mars. As space travel becomes more and more affordable, more and more astronauts will be necessary to do various types of jobs out there. But this is the boring part. Yeah, scientists and engineers are great and all. But where are the casinos? If you don't want to be a scientist, but still want to be part of space exploration, you can go and work on more private projects. 
As we learn to build bigger and better international space stations, and as the price of sending the men on there becomes cheaper and cheaper, at some point, some billionaire will decide that he wants to build a casino in space. You can already see the marketing opportunities. Technically, it won't be in outer space. It will be in Earth's orbit, just like the ISS is right now, but that is still considered space. If you are an exceptional manager and have the right contacts, you could be the first manager in space. And we can both hope that no billionaire Karens exist in the world. Most visitors in that casino will be those who have a lot of money or those who want to be seen as having a lot of money. And you are right to think that this casino will need other people too. Janitors, waitress, barmen and chiefs will all be needed on the space casino. So, if you want to work in space but have no exceptional skills, you could still work there. And I mean, being a space janitor sounds a lot cooler than a normal janitor. The accountants and lawyers don't need to be on the space casino. They could work from the Earth. So, I guess being a lawyer won't help you in any way to work in the space industry. But the casino is just one example of space jobs that will be created as we get better at doing space things. Casinos will be fully luxury niche and the money it makes will not be tied to the fact that it is in space. A mining operation on a nearby asteroid, on the other hand, will be the total opposite of that. You might have heard the buzz going around the fact that it's not so near future. We could start expecting resources from other celestial bodies. We discussed doing some mining work on the Moon. But there is not a whole lot of things on the Moon that will be worth enough to make a profit. However, something like an asteroid made out of cobalt can be hugely profitable. Cobalt is used in almost every device you can think of. But there is not that much cobalt on Earth. So if we want to move forwards and transition to clean energy, then we need a lot more cobalt than we already have. So if we find an asteroid that can be mined, redirect it to come and stay in Earth's orbit and then start mining, there could be a huge profit to be had. And that's just cobalt. Imagine how many other resources can be mined in space. The answer is a lot. Engineers that will design space drills, actual miners that will mine resources in space, and probably a lot more jobs that I can't even think of right now will need to be filled. So, after casinos and mining operations, the next possible industry might be a health industry. You might not have thought about this, but there's a lot of benefits to being in a space where there is no gravity. Possibly very hard and highly risky operations can be done very simply in such an environment. The development of new drugs can go on a whole new level. So those who excel in chemistry and biology will have a lot of potential jobs to fill. They will also need janitors in space hospitals, so we will have the chance to work in space. We also can't forget that humanity is not in peace. It never will be. So. If the conflict between two great powers start here on Earth, what will happen in space? We could make an agreement that any conflict on Earth won't be a conflict in space. But that's like saying that any conflict on land will not be a conflict in the sea. So whether you want it or not, space warriors will also be a thing in the future. In any of these places and every other place that we will build, we'll need food, basic maintenance and a doctor. So keep that in mind. But all of those potential space industries are at the low end 30 years from now. That might not be that long, or that might be whole life for some. But let's think about it a bit further in the future. Jobs 80 years in the future and 100s of thousands of miles away from Earth. Let's assume that for the next 80 years, the humanity starts and succeeds at colonizing many celestial bodies. The Moon, Mars and some asteroids in our solar system have been colonized. There are thousands of people living outside of Earth. So, what are the potential jobs that need to be fulfilled? Well, 
If we manage to make living on the Moon comparable to live on Earth, the Moon will need many of the same things that we have done on Earth. Restaurants, hospitals, hotels, bars, cinemas, sports stadiums, and so much more. I would kill a man to see an interstellar movie on a big screen while being on a moon base. Or imagine a football match between Barcelona and Real Madrid, but they are on Mars. Yeah, Mars has less gravity than Earth, but a football match can still be played. A football match won't be funny on the moon, though. So, technically speaking, many of jobs that we have on Earth will be open on the Moon. And Mars as well. Imagine filming a remake of The Martian on Mars. So, just like in Minecraft, the only limiting factor for the potential jobs in the new space age will be our imagination. After thinking about possible jobs in space, there is one thing we haven't touched on a potential aspect of space exploration. In all of this video, we were assuming that when we ramp up our explanation efforts, there won't be anyone who will make that harder for us. I'm of course talking about the aliens. What if in 30, 40 or even in a hundred years, we come in contact with another intelligent and sentient species that are not us? What will happen then? I'll leave this possibility for the future video. Along with all these possibilities, you should also consider that having a fear of light, height, or any type of psychological disorder, you will most likely not be able to go and work in space. There are probably a lot more possibilities that we just don't even consider, like space presence. But this video can always have a follow-up. Consider subscribing if you like this video. Thank you for watching and we will meet in the next one. Until then, have a beautiful day!